If you want to know what's happened to the Open Smartwatch project since this video has hit the internet and gathered around 1.5 million views since then, this is the video you're gonna to have to watch. Let's go through some of the changes step by step. One thing is the screws on top. I replaced them, well I didn't really replace them, but I've switched them to the back of the case and one thing that I disliked about this design was one, it didn't feel really watch-like, so with the rectangular LiPo battery that's underneath this rectangular shape here, I replaced the battery with a round one, which made it easier to design this case. And another thing that I also wanted to achieve was a certain amount of uh, waterproofness. So inside this case is, let's say, a TPU sock around all the components, and the only opening to the side is where the USB port is here. Although, one of the developers that is working on this managed to get the raindrop into the USB port and frying some of the components. So that's still not optimal, but we're getting there. I've worn this model for quite some time and I've worked around the, the USB port issue with these tiny rubber things you can get, and which helps to a certain degree. I still found issues that I, I, I wasn't happy with. And one thing I think a watch should be able to do is tell you the time when you look at it. And well, this does, but only if you tap on it or if you turn it the right way but if you just glance on it quickly the screen will be off because it's a backlit TFT screen and that will be off most of the time otherwise you run time of hours uh, as you probably know from other watches so the biggest and fundamental change was replacing the screen with this beautiful sharp memory display also the the buttons they, they were always terrible to assemble they were the fiddly they, they fell out and sometimes they didn't click properly and what I, what I changed with this design was I designed a PCB that sits on top that has four pads on the back and those pads are connected to those four copper areas uh, in the, the top left and right locations. So I did two designs, uh, the, the, the black bezel is easier to see, you can see the pads here, there, those are the touch pads um, which replaces then the four buttons that the original watch had. Well, I said four buttons, that's not quite true. The top left corner is the reset button, so we only have three buttons. On the, the monochromatic edition that I've worked on this year, those are four touch buttons that we can use and none of these is reset button. So we've got an additional button. What else changed? If you take a look at it from a different perspective, from the side, you can see, although from the, the top, the, the second version of the case of the light edition is smaller, it's a bit thicker and this case of the monochromatic edition now is just under 10 millimeters is at a thickness that I have convinced my wife to wearing this for a for longer time than I have actually. Uh, yeah, let's take a look inside. On the left we have the PCB of the light edition and you can see here I was still using the TTGO T Micro 32 module and the components are on the back of the PCB such that if you flip the LCD screen over it should more or less go flush onto the PCB. There's no components in between here. So I changed this approach with the monochromatic edition where I'm sandwiching the components between the LCD. This leaves a little bit more room for the flex cable to be not bent off because many of you had issues in installing the PCBs with the screens and breaking off the cables. And if you turn it around, there's a huge flat area on the back where the lithium battery can be squished against to make the entire sandwich of screen, PCB and battery a lot, lot thinner. As you can see here, there's a vibration motor. So that's a new addition. In the corner here, we have a barometric pressure sensor. There's still the same accelerometer on it, the BMA400, which sits over here on the right hand side. And in this corner, we have the QMC588, um, 883 I think it is, Compass, an entirely new charging circuit here and in the center we have an initial chip. So what this version lacked was a way of accurately telling how full the battery is. So I'm using a LiPo gauge circuit or chip here that can tell us the relative state of charge. And then here the replacement of the, the TTGO module with the native ESP32 Micro D3 version 2, which means this has eight megabytes of flash instead of four and an additional two megabytes of M. Because we've noticed while working on the Open Smartwatch OS on the light edition that having a full buffered screen and turning on Bluetooth at the same time does not 
worked out good. So how does this look in an assembled state? You can see the battery here, there's a hole here on the back for the pressure sensor. Instead of soldering the battery connections, I made sure that we have tiny little plugs. Also, there's the possibility on this one to install a second battery. So if they're at the same voltage, you can add a second battery, which is larger and go for a thicker case. Might, might be something you would like to experiment with. The vibration motor is glued onto the PCB here. And yeah, I also changed the design instead of going with an FDM printed case with an SLA printed case. Here I would like to thank my sponsor PCBWay uh, to allow me to use their services for free to get this stuff because with the chip crisis, this has become an expensive hobby, so I'm grateful for everything I can get there. Yeah, this is this is how it looks like. This is not final yet. There are still some improvements I would like to do with the watch. For example, here you can see in the corner that I had room for uh, a backup battery that if the, the, the main battery runs low, that the real time clock will st still keep keeping the time. But I've removed it because A, I want to add an even bigger battery. So with this 250 milliamps, this has been running since the first of this month and that's 17 days ago now and the battery is roughly still half full. So without any massive software improvements, I'm already at a runtime of one month, not using any Bluetooth or radio and running 24 seven, refreshing the screen every minute. And well, whenever you look at it, you, you can see the actual time for a month with an ESP32. And I think that that's pretty terrific. So that, that's a huge improvement from this one. So why haven't I released it yet? That's because most of the components are not available right now. I'm not done yet with um, finalizing TCB. So I still got a few things that I want to clean up. And the screens are, I think there's one shop left on AliExpress that's selling this type of screen because it's not manufactured anymore. This doesn't mean that this is where the project is going to stop. There are screens, up, well, newer versions of the screen that have eight colors, which is even greater. So there's stuff to play around with. But it's not a screen that I found yet somewhere available in numbers that I, I want to afford or invest as a hobby. Um, but I think that's just a question of time that some other watch will have this kind of display and it will kind of trickle down as a replacement or repairment screen for that. So what else have I been working on? The GPS edition. That was a fun learning experience. I've went through several iterations of creating this PCB. So it was a redesign from scratch, still using the TFT screen and adding a micro SD card to add map data to it. So let me look for the demo quick. Here's the example I was looking for. Um, with the micro SD card, we can store the GPS tiles. I've written a blog post on how to create your map data with open source tools. If you want to know more about that, head over to my website and check that out. And this worked when you are not wearing the watch. And yeah, I think this is kind of a cool tech demo, but nothing that I want to release because it's supposed to be a watch and if you wear it and the GPS doesn't work, there's no point in doing it. So we're just going to waste our resources on that. So I haven't worked on this for quite some time, but I will pick that up again because my focus is now on watches that, that have the screen always on. Not this year, maybe next year, we will see how that goes. There is a lot that I learned from designing the GPS edition. So this is the first iteration of the GPS edition, still working with the TTGO module. I did another round designing it here, getting some more room onto the PCB with going with a native ESP32. And actually I don't have the, the last iteration I did of the GPS edition. So you have to imagine you could see it through this one. This, this, this was basically a complete redesign of this PCB. So I kept all of the parts that were working and came up with a new light edition version four point something. This something will be a number and a release in a few months when I found the time to figure out why this is not working 100% yet, but this will combine a lot of things that you will like. So first of all, I added an additional two megabytes of RAM. So this is using the ESP32 Micro D4 instead of the V302, which is still four megabytes of flash, but an external two megabytes of RAM. I added the BME280 here in the corner to have a pressure sensor so we can build an altimeter. 
I added the Lipo Fuel Gauge here in the, this side of the PCB, so we know that how full is the battery actually, which is a really great improvement by wearing it to know how much is actually left. And what else do we have? I also added the compass here at, at this edge of the PCB. So this is almost done. Oh yes, I also moved the buttons more closer to the center of the PCBs. So you can see here the, 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 the touch buttons don't stick out of the PCB, which I think will make it easier to design smaller cases with this uh, version. And I also changed the design that if you flip the display closed, it will sit on top of the buttons which means the, the total sandwich of screen, PCB and battery will be slimmer again so that we can also achieve something around 9 or 10 millimeters. And if you've watched closely, what you can also see here is we have additional pins here to attach external sensors via I2C. If you want to add your own uh, heartbeat sensor, go for it. You will have pins here. There's uh, ground 3v3. Uh, VBAT and SCL and SCAA. We have another pin here to IO. I can't remember. I think it. Anyhow, you have an additional GPIO that you can attach here. You can add a piezo beeper thing directly to it or an external circuit vibration motor. And we have here the, the soldable battery pack. And this square here is for a possible micro SD card. So that should be optional. Maybe someone finds the time to run Doom on your watch, on, on the ASP32 based watch, because I think the resources need to be loaded off an off a SD card. I've tried that out. I managed to run the, the maps with a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. Um, as this thing has Bluetooth, turn it into an MPC player. Feel free, knock yourself out. I think there's a lot of potential in this board. I haven't verified everything yet. Give me some time, we'll get there and I will release this one at some point this year. The same goes for the PCB of the Chromatic Edition. I will also release that. I'm not done yet. I'm working on two watches at the same time, step by step. I've learned a lot, but I think my designs have improved a lot and I think we'll have a lot of fun to be playing around with this. Yeah, talking about ideas. I've also got flexible e-paper displays. So this is also one thing that I want to try out is building something that is even closer to your wrist and wraps around your wrist. Maybe we'll get flexible batteries at some point. I've also ordered smaller displays that should also fit onto this PCB that will get an even lighter light version of the PCB. What else is there to say? I'm pretty sure I've forgotten most of the stuff. It's a huge project. Um, if you have questions, please join my Discord server and ask your questions there. I'm pretty sure you're not the first person to ask a certain question and someone else might answer. This way I'll be able to scale this project a little bit better. In the last one and a half years, I've responded to over two and a half thousand direct messages on Instagram. And um, I think I've spent the same amount of time answering your questions than working on this watch. So, one way you can help us if you have questions head over to discord here you will find the open smartwatch sections here it's divided in two groups now the open smartwatch development sections with the automated spam bot from github whenever simon or rufalo are the the most active developers right now have added a lot lots of great new things um fallback wi-fi connections if the first wi-fi ssd ssid that you've gotten configured didn't work um, improving the, the web config interface so if you launch the configuration app on the open smartwatch os it starts a web server and you get a web interface where you can configure things uh, statistics about the steps over the, la over the last week how many calories you've burned how many meters you've, you've, you've walked there's been tons of um, pictures from watches that have been built here so this is the, the fitness app you can see here if you want to know really Head over to the Discord. This is where people post their work. Uh, Conway's Game of Life implementation. So this has been fun to watch the, the watch faces, the, the applications, the ideas that the community has been working on. So I've been really grateful for that. Thank you very much to all the contributors, which you can see on the right hand side. Uh, if you've committed, if you've commit or push anything, if you add to this, this is some parts you will get on the Discord. I don't know. I think the video is already long enough. Um, if you want to throw money my way, there's two ways. Either buy me a coffee on coffee, link in the description, or something else that I've worked on in between, which may be one of the reasons why the smartwatch is not finished yet, is 
I wrote a science fiction novel, Mars Will Divide Us. You can get it as an ebook on Amazon. Check out the reviews. I'm surprised. This is, from my perspective, a really interesting experience, a very, very interesting way of seeing how will humanity develop, how will society develop, how will a Mars colony look like with everything that's going on, with all the ambitious billionaires building stuff that goes, goes into space. If you want to know, check out my book. That's going to be an interesting read. And if you're also interested in figuring out what is the only possible way of getting in contact with an alien species, you'll find it in there. So thanks for checking out this update. I think I should do these more regularly. And if you have questions, detailed questions about your set or your progress, head over to Discord or about this project. Things that I should answer into the next video, send them into the comments here on YouTube so I can find them again when I prepare the next video. So this one has been entirely improvised. I hope you don't mind. See you around. See you next time. Bye bye.